Welcome to Mass with Bob. Today we're looking at resisted motion under gravity where the resistance is proportional to the velocity squared. This is under the umbrella topic of mechanics, uh, moving bodies and the forces on them. So today we're looking at uh, obviously the falling case. Um, aluminium one is actually going down. That's a positive direction. Positive direction is downwards. Okay, um, the resistance you can see is kV squared. So it's proportional to the square of the velocity. Okay, now um, we're going to go through some equations here. Um, we're going to find the velocity at a t particular time t, and um, we need to go through a bit of work here. But I'll just um, see if I can get this magic pen working again. Uh, I have a bit of trouble with it sometimes. Oh, here we are. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's make it a bit bigger. Okay. So the first thing. Is what's happening? Well, at uh, t is zero, the velocity is zero, and x is zero. Okay, so we're actually falling, and downwards positive. Okay, so we set up the uh, equations of motion, the net force uh, m x double dot. That's uh, m a is equal to now. If you look there, which way is acting positively? Well, the g obviously is going in the same direction, so it's positive, and the k v squared is uh, op op opposing the motion in the opposite direction. <laughs> Right. So the, when we set the equations up, um, we just look at the signs, uh, x double dot equals g minus kv squared, obviously divided through by m. Now, um, because we can write the acceleration x double dot in different ways, I've just written it here, uh, we're going to use the dv dt and v dv dx shortly. Okay, so the first one we use is uh, the v dt equals g minus kv squared. Uh, we separate the variables, get the v's with the v's and the t by itself. Okay, dt, then we integrate from, um, you can see here, from 0 to v as time goes from 0 to t. And um, this integral, um, we're going to need to change the variable uh, because it turns into, you can see here, a log integral. But uh, over here, you can see this is what we're going to be using. This is the formula right here. Let's make this a bit, a bit bigger. Yeah, okay. So, this is the formula we're going to try and fit it to. It's, uh, we can use uh, partial fractions, but basically I'm just going to use a formula there. That's how it's derived. And we let p squared equals kv squared. Differentiate, and we get uh, 2 p dp equals 2 kv dv. When you rearrange that, you need a substitution for dv. And um, if you have a look here, dv is actually 1 on root k dp. After you muck around with that a little bit, you need to also adjust the bounds. Uh, to p bounds now. Okay, so this now becomes one of the standard integrals. And we now need, we get the t is um, 1 on 2 root kg, uh, ln root g plus p all over root g minus p. And we're going to have to evaluate that between, you can see here, 0 and root kv. Okay. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, here you can see there's a fair bit of work involved in uh, getting uh, the, uh, well, the velocity is a function of time, I suppose. This is what we're eventually after, the final thing there. As you can see here, just, okay, it's a bit rough on that one. But uh, you can see here, basically, we've got to try and extract that v out of that expression with t in it. Uh, so we need to multiply by 2 root gk. Take the exponentials of both sides to get, um, as you know, logs and exponentials, inverse functions. We can drop the v expression out. We need to rearrange. Multiply both sides by root g minus root k v. Um, and uh, okay, you can see here over here. Let's see if I can need to make that a bit bigger still to fit this in. But here we are. You can see that uh, now we've got v's. We uh, on one side, and we take out the v as a common factor. Use a negative sign to switch it around, and then divide through by the common factor root uh, k e to the 2t root g k plus root k. Both sides got that. And finally, we get down here. Eventually, we get a the velocity. It's a function of time now. That's, it. Yeah. That's a fair bit of work involved in getting the velocity as a function of time. Okay, now for the displacement. 
Okay, we uh, now we'll try and find the vertical displacement x. You can see here I've also done the, the terminal velocity, which is uh, equals root g over k. Which is, uh, if you might remember back to one of the other videos, if the resistance was proportional to the just the velocity itself, then the terminal velocity is actually v equals g over k. And uh, you might uh, extrapolate from that if uh, the resistance is proportional to the velocity cubed, then the terminal velocity will be v equals the cube root of g over k. Okay, so let's try and get this uh, magic pen happening again. Okay, here we are. So we start off with the equations again, and um, let's see here, we, uh, mx double dot equals mg minus mkv squared, as you know, because our union is actually falling. And um, again, we just uh, get x double dot equals g minus kv squared, and now we use that the acceleration, x double dot is equal to v dv dx. Um, we then rearrange this uh, eventually to separate the variables, obviously, get dx on one side and the v's and dv's on the other side. Then we integrate, um, you can see here, from 0 to x and from 0 to v. Okay, and you can hopefully see that that's going to be a log integral. Okay, a v on the top and a v squared on the bottom. Okay, let's have a good look over here. Here we are. Yes, it's um, uh, minus 1 and 2k ln g minus kv squared from 0 to v. That's the x. And eventually we just plug uh, that in and we end up getting that the displacement x is equal to 1 and 2k ln g over g minus kv squared. Okay, so you can see here x is a, a function of the velocity here. And uh, let's go quickly through the terminal velocity. You might remember uh, to get the terminal velocity, all you have to do is uh, let x double dot equal zero. This is the easy way. And then uh, solve that. And eventually you get down here that the terminal velocity is v equals root g over k. OK. All right, so now this is, you might remember, this is the, uh, the minion is actually falling, going down. Right. OK, so that's the concentration. Down is actually the concentration. OK. All right. Now um, we're going to actually have a look at um, also finding the um, velocity at a particular position. Uh, x is equal to h as well. So uh, we're just going to the minion is going to be falling, and uh, at a particular spot called x is equal to h, we're going to try and find its velocity. Yeah. So uh, again, I'll try and uh, see if we can get this magic pen to work again. In a fairly rough circle. Okay, yeah. All right, now just to remember, we fall in from, say, a height at this case where x is equal to zero, uh, uh, is actually at the top, and v is equal to zero and t is equal to zero. So uh, we use the um, uh, x from before, x is 1 and 2k ln g minus kv squared, and we basically try and make v the subject from this. And we let x is equal to a particular spot called x is equal to h. Multiply by 2k, take the exponentials um, of both sides, um, and eventually to flip the fraction, just use the negative exponential. Um, and then let's see what happens over here. We are now trying to make v the subject, and you can see here we just need to manipulate both sides of the equation, get v squared is equal to g bracket 1 minus e to the 2kh over k, and take the square root of both sides. So we assume that. Velocity is positive, so we're going to just take the positive velocity uh, km at this particular point. So if x equals h, uh, the velocity is uh, one simply the square root of g bracket 1 minus e to the minus 2kh all over k. Okay, well, that's all for the time being, and uh, thank you for watching, and bye for now.